right. Hello, class. Welcome back. Today we are going over day two of our respiratory system. So I'm going to go ahead and present my screen with you. And you guys should be on our Google Classroom weekly slideshows. You should be on Thursday, respiratory system day two. Right. You're going to be looking at slides 16 to 30. Open your assignment. And this would be your lesson. So your do now question is, what interesting thing have you learned so far about the respiratory system? Think about yesterday, we talked about the numbers of bronchioles, um, how many alveoli do you have? Um, I taught you the oxygen path. So remember the trachea to your bronchi, to your bronchioles, to the alveoli, and then eventually to your blood, and then over to the left side of your heart. I gave you the names of the organs. Remember the muscle that attaches to your rib cage to help you breathe, that's your diaphragm muscle. Right, so what interesting thing, maybe you, you found interesting that you could live with one lung. Maybe you found it interesting for every four beats of your heart, you take about one breath. That's average, right? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on. So today we're gonna be talking about different lung diseases. I'm gonna tell you what it is, what causes it, and the treatment of it. And these are just a few of them we're gonna go over. So first one we're gonna talk about is bronchitis. If you've ever had bronchitis, remember the word itis means inflammation of. Well, bronch, we learned, is your bronchi. You have your one trachea and then two bronchi that split into your lungs. So you have inflammation of your bronchi. So over here on the left shows a normal bronchi, right? Nice, good tube. Air, oxygen goes in, carbon dioxide out. Oxygen in, carbon dioxide out, right? Well, when you get sick, you get bronchitis. What happens is you get that infection, right? And it goes down your trachea and it settles in your bronchi. When it's settling your bronchi, if you look over here, it's mucousy and it's inflamed. So it's <sighs> harder to breathe or maybe you're coughing up a lot of stuff or you're like spitting up phlegm, right? Because it's mucousy. Um, usually if people have bronchitis, you go to the doctor, they give you an antibiotic and it clears it up. If you don't, it can turn into pneumonia. That mucus now then settles into your alveoli, into our lungs. Um, especially older adults and babies can die from pneumonia. I mean, anyone technically can, but especially older adults and babies, it's just that mucus in your lungs. If you have mucus in your lungs, the oxygen says, well, where do I go? Where do I go? And it can't find an alveoli to send it back to your heart to breathe, right? So unfortunately, that mucus can cover up a lot of those areas and people can't breathe and that could cause death. Like I said, no oxygen to your areas of your body. All right, asthma. I bet you a lot of you guys out there probably have asthma and we, there's different levels of asthma. Maybe some of you guys have what's called exercise induced asthma. Now it doesn't mean you go run and work out like oh, I'm tired. Oh, I have asthma. There's a difference. It literally feels like someone is choking you and you can't breathe, right? It's not just being out of shape. Some of you guys might have um, asthma based on different triggers. Like pollen might trigger your asthma. Some of you guys might have really, really severe asthma where you're on breathing treatments, right? Well, pretty much what is asthma? So I don't have asthma. So if you look at this guy, that's a normal airway, right? My trachea, my bronchi, my bronchioles. We have 60,000 bronchioles. All these tubes, nice and easy for air to go in and out, right? Someone with asthma, their tubes are already inflamed. Just normal every day, they're inflamed. And then say something triggers their asthma, whether it's the pollen outside. Maybe it was the exercise. Maybe it's dog hair. Whatever triggers their asthma, it gets even more swollen. And as you can see, mucousy. Well, if I take my airway and the air is going in and out and then I make it smaller and then I add mucus to it. Well, you're saying I got to get air in that little bitty hole. <sighs> it's harder. And then people have asthma attacks. Usually they have their rescue medicine, their inhaler. And what that inhaler does, it's trying to open up that airway. It's trying to get rid of some of that mucus. Those of you guys who are more severe, you're on your breathing treatments. And if someone's going through an asthma attack and they don't have that um, medication, then they're going to be sent to the hospital to help aid and slow down their breathing, right? Like I said, it just feels like someone is just squeezing your trachea, squeezing your bronchi, squeezing all those bronchioles, and you're like, let go, I need air to get through. Well, unfortunately, that's how someone feels when they're having an asthma attack. Okay, this next slide, I'm not gonna show it on here, but go ahead and open this and click for that video. It gives a little bit more of an idea of what asthma is and how we need to care for it. All right, after asthma, we're gonna talk about COPD. COPD stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. Whenever you guys see that word pulmonary, pulmonary means lungs. So this is anything that's obviously obstructs your lungs. Chronic means over time. So if you constantly have bronchitis, you could have COPD. If you have emphysema, 
it's considered COPD. It's something you just have over time and it's, it's obstructing your lungs, right? So that's why I said the two main types is long-term exposure to substances that irritate your lungs. Maybe you're constantly around smoke or you do smoke. Maybe you live in an area, like I'm from California, constant around air pollution. Well, if I'm constant around air pollution and it's affecting my bronchi, I'm constantly having respiratory infections, I can now be considered having COPD because I'm chronically exposed to it. Um, as you see, the first symptoms, you might not see them, might not be that big of a deal, but then you start noticing like, man, I have a cough. It's constantly there. I'm constantly having mucus. It's hard for me to breathe. Maybe you feel wheezing or chest tightness, right? Those obviously aren't normal. Go to the doctor and let them figure out what's going on. And they'll do different types of tests. If you smoke or around smoke, I mean, that's number one thing. Get away from smoke and you could probably start preventing and start helping this disorder. All right, so this pretty much shows you guys pictures. So if you look on this upper right, that shows your airway. So the healthy airway, like I said, my tube, nice and big. Someone who has chronic bronchitis, what happens is that airway gets really, 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 really small, really mucousy. My sister, unfortunately, smokes a lot. And even just on a normal day, her normal, she feels like she has phlegm. She's constantly <coughs> like hacking up stuff. Like, Ew, that's gross, right? Well, because she constantly, that, that's her normal. That's normal for her right? If she stops smoking, your body's so cool, guys, it will then replenish and take away most, if not all of the damage it caused, right? Um, we'll learn people who smoke, unfortunately, it cuts off like 10 years of our life. So you think about it, like, if I usually think people live until their 80s, I might not live until 70, okay? Um, what it does, COPD, emphysema does your alveoli. Remember, your alveoli is a little air sac that the oxygen molecule is trying to find. Once it finds one of those air sacs, the air sacs is what sends it to your blood, sends it to your heart, and sends it to your body, right? Well, someone who has emphysema, it's like, if you look at this bottom picture, it's like I took a needle, I went, I popped all those air sacs, and then they depleted. So now that oxygen is trying to find one, it says, ooh, this one's not good. Ooh, neither is this one. Ooh, not that one. Ooh, I think there's one over there. Well, by the time it finds one, I need to take another breath. So a lot of people who have emphysema, it's harder to breathe. You'll see a lot of people carry around oxygen tanks because by the time their oxygen finds an actual alveoli that's not damaged, it might be too late and I need to take another breath of air. All right. Um, I quickly talk about the flu. The flu is a virus, right? Um, a lot of people when they have their flu, they might confuse it, especially now with COVID. There's a lot of symptoms that are very similar. Um, the flu is scarier for older people and newborn babies. That's probably what you're also hearing about COVID, right? It's scarier for certain age groups. And obviously, if you have underlying medical conditions. Well, what the flu is, it's that cough. It's a fever, right? So it's associated with the fever. You might get chills. Your body just hurts, right? You might have a sore throat. Those could be symptoms of the flu. If you guys ever feel like this, you go to the doctor, they're going to do like many tests. They're going to do a flu test. Nowadays, they're going to do a COVID test. They might do strep throat if you have a sore throat. They might do mono. Okay. So there's like pretty much four tests that those symptoms could be, and then they'll rule it out. Um, it says down here the main way to keep from getting sick, and this is just anything. Make sure you guys go to the doctor, get your checkups. Make sure you guys are practicing good hygiene, washing your hands, right? Make sure you're eating healthy, exercising. Do what you can to fight some of these illnesses from coming at us. Okay, this one's called tuberculosis. It's also called TB if you heard of TB. This comes, if you've ever heard the, um, someone had myco, this is from the mycobacterium. Um, tuberculosis can kill you. It's really scary and it's highly contagious, highly contagious. You don't see or hear a lot about TB cases. They're, they're here and there, right? Um, what happens here is like if you have a cough that's lasted longer than three weeks, you start noticing you're losing weight. You're not hungry, right? You might cough up blood or just constantly mucus. You feel weak. You have fevers. You have night sweats. Like I said, this isn't normal. So when you go to the doctor, they might test you for TB and it might come back saying you have TB. You are highly contagious, right? So if you get tested, you have TB. This is pretty much what's happening. That mycobacterium is just settling in your lungs. So eventually it's going to become bigger. And then all of a sudden you can see it's just like taking over that lung. That's why it's hard for someone to breathe. breathe. These holes, that could be the blood that's coming through, right? A whole bunch of mucus coming through. Um, someone could die from TB because like I said, someone could die from pneumonia. If you're not able to breathe, then that could cause death, right? A lot of people have TB. They're probably three weeks quarantined, and that's even after they get tested or get on medication for it. Um, they're still highly contagious. So if you ever have any symptoms, like I said, go to the doctor, let them rule out, and they might say, oh, it's the flu or, oh, it's strep. If it's something bigger, 
then they hopefully get you on medication to start fighting it. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is called cystic fibrosis. Um, what this is, this is something that a lot of people can pass away from. If you guys see on the bottom right here, I have highlighted in red. 50 years ago, if you were born with cystic fibrosis, a lot of times they say you wouldn't make it past the age of like 11, a elementary school age. Nowadays, people are living into their 30s, 40s and beyond because of all the technology and research we have on it. This is something that's inherited. It's not contagious. So if it runs in your family, you're more likely to get it. It's pretty much like thick, sticky mucus. It forms in your lungs. It forms in your pancreas and other organs. So think in your lungs, just like pneumonia or bronchitis. You have mucus just blocking your airways. <gasps> it's harder to breathe. And your pancreas, which we talked about, helps your blood sugar level and helps uh, digest fatty foods, right? What happens is you have like mucus in there and it's clogging the pancreas. So it's not able to send what it needs to other organs of your body, which can cause issues for us, right? So this shows you guys just an, an example. So this shows you guys the airway of someone who doesn't have cystic fibrosis and someone who does is similar to like when you think about asthma or bronchitis, how it just blocks it. But that's ongoing. This is someone ongoing and it's not just your lungs. As you see here, um, your skin, you start producing like really salty skin. Your liver is being clogged up. Your pancreas is getting clogged up. Your intestines can't get the good stuff out of your food, which means if you can't get the nutrients, you can't send good stuff to other areas of your body, which starts shutting them down, right? Um, so that's why they say a lot of people with cystic fibrosis, unfortunately, they're looking at maybe 50s and hopefully a little longer, depending on the type of research and medical care they can get. All right, moving on. Lung cancer. Cancer is cancer. doesn't matter where it starts. Cancer could just attack one area and go to the next area, right? Lung cancer is one of the most common cancers in the world amongst men and women, most common. And one of the main reasons, not saying this is the only reason, one of the main reasons is smoking, right? Um, it could be areas of pollution. Maybe you, unfortunately, my grandpa died of lung cancer. His type was mesothelioma, and his was from asbestos. He was a Marine, and he worked in their shipyards, and he worked in the naval shipyards as well in California. And back then, they did do, like, how, like, building searches to see if it should be condemned or mold. Well, they're constantly breathing this asbestos. Well, then my grandpa started noticing he was having a cough that wasn't getting better. He was having chest pain. So I feel like it was like many heart attacks here and there. He would cough up blood, right? He started having all these symptoms, the wheezing, the hoarseness. He loses his voice a lot. And he says, what the heck's going on? He went from like really healthy to dropping so much weight. I mean, there was times I was like, man, he, he just doesn't look good, right? Well, when he went to the doctor, he ended up having lung cancer. That years and years of breathing the asbestos, it just damaged his lungs, right? Now, people can get it anyway, right? Um, but those are symptoms. Like I said, if you feel any of these symptoms, go to the doctor. Let them rule out what it is or let them see if it's something bad. Let's get taken care of, like, sooner than possible, okay? So these pictures show you some signs of lung cancer. If you see this, what the square is showing, that little tumor right there is a sign of lung cancer, okay? By the time my grandpa passed away, unfortunately, he went through chemo and radiation, but he was in his 70s, and he... He'd rather have a quality life. And he just said, I'm just going to ride it out. Unfortunately, by the time he passed, that cancer spread and it spread to other organs of his body. Right. This just shows you symptoms of lung cancer, shows you pictures. So this is nice, healthy lungs. And that's someone who unfortunately has lung cancer. Like I said, it's like plaque in your teeth. If you don't brush your teeth, that plaque is just going to keep having a party. It's going to move from one tooth to the next, to the next. It's sort of what cancer does. Unfortunately, it's cells that just attack our body. When it attacks our body, it's going to go find somewhere else to attack. And once it gets in the bloodstream, I told you, blood goes everywhere in your body. It is now sent anywhere. That's why people go through chemo and radiation to literally try to kill it all off. All right. So what I want you guys to do now is co copy and paste this in your notes. Now, when you copy and paste it, don't just copy and paste and forget about it. I'm going to ask you on the test. I might just say, what is this picture of? I might point to, and you have to tell me that is the diaphragm muscle. That's the muscle that attaches to the rib cage to let me breathe. So make sure you guys know oxygen goes in your nose and mouth, down your trachea, down your bronchi, down into your 30,000 in each lung bronchial, and then into your 300 million in each lung alveoli. And then here comes the blood and it sends it to the left side of your heart. So make sure you guys know all that information for our test tomorrow. Um, other than that, Really focus on taking care of yourselves. Obviously, we want to say no to smoking, any type of tobacco products, vaping, right? Um, with the whole COVID going on, wear your mask, social distance, do what you guys can. You might be okay, but unfortunately, we could be carriers and pass it to maybe the older generation or someone with an underlying condition. So please take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. I mean, it's just gross anyways. Just wash your hands no matter whether there's just germs everywhere, right? 
Take care of your body and your body will take care of you. All right. Um, if you guys have any questions, holler at me. Hopefully you guys are ready for tomorrow's test. All right. Um, I'll talk to you later. See ya.